Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's time for our weekly painting progress. Now I will apologize in advance, I didn't get a whole lot of interesting stuff painted. It was very much batches of similar colors, but sometimes you just gotta do that. And I probably am not gonna get a whole lot done this week, what with school ending, family leaving town, and helping them get ready, and just my general you know, wrapping up the end of the year, having to get my classroom all set, all that jazz. So I'm going to try, and I'm sure I'll get a couple things done, but I told Sparkle Trout to at least have some stuff on standby, and I knew I had got some stuff painted this week, but I told him to hold on to it for the next, just to be safe. But let's start things off. So this was a model from, oh gosh, Dragon's Forge Miniatures. That sounds right. I'm like 99% sure that's who it was. Uh, they did those Steel Watch Knights, I believe they were called. Uh, really nice, very just straightforward. Sometimes you need something straightforward. And I did a very boring, basic paint job on this guy, as you can see. Uh, not a whole lot to write home about my paint job. And I gotta say, I do really dig their bases. I really like just how densely packed and populated they are with stuff. Now, I just did a quickie speed paint on this but you know you can see there's just a lot going on there and I think with a better artist you can really make these things pop and I mean I'm gonna have a video probably later this week on their new halflings if you guys are curious uh, very similar in their execution of the bases and stuff and I'll be the first to say I'm not a huge halfling fan but they got a lot of character to them so keep an eye out for that so we got him done because I painted a few other guys from this set, and I don't know where I put them. <laughs> so, I needed to have something handy. Uh, in a similar color scheme is a random Necron that has been lost from his dynasty. I don't know where the rest of them are, or why he was left out at least. I don't know if I even painted them like this. I kind of feel like I did. Uh, at least I know the armor is correct. The gun, I have no idea if I did them like that. I mean, just really simple, boring paint job. That's okay. Now the next two, as I was in the mood for robots, I cannot remember the exact name, but that's okay because much like our Dragon's Forge miniatures, uh, these guys are going to be, and technically I guess girl, are going to be showing up in the relatively near future. This is a Battle Yak miniatures sculpt, and I cannot remember what they were called, but they had a whole release, and this was actually the pinup model, and like all... Battle Yak models, they're totally modular for the most part, or in single cast pieces, but we'll go more in depth on that in another day. Uh, but these were like, I don't know, <laughs> that's the nice thing. Uh, they have a bit of a retro robot vibe going on. I mean, you can see a bit of hint of like Necron, I know they have like a skull headed option, bit of, you know, like that 50s robot vibe, bit of a war forged, but the cool thing is, I mean, you literally could do the whatever you wanted with a model like this. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, stacks up pretty well. Of course, our friend here is standing on quite the base. Um, this is a non pinup version. So you can see here again, very retro robot y. And I think with the right paint job, I wanted to paint them up like my Necrons. I have no idea why. Uh, they had a bunch of big, clanky tools, but not a lot of ranged weapons. And I think that's. That's one thing I want Battle Yak to consider is more ranged options. There were a few. I think they had like some retro ray gun blasters. I better go double check. I've got a pile of parts that I have put somewhere to hang out with those figures. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled. And since I'm just rolling with that turquoise color scheme, uh, a random Atlan Forge. I don't even know what they were called. With a big glaringly obvious in hindsight print error yeah that canister didn't print right oh well I was going for a kind of alpha legion vibe rather than the typical zinch I, I think the fact that there were just the snakes and the multi-headed snakes all over him made me feel like this should be a alpha legion model but I mean it's got like little hieroglyphics right there on his back there are very overt Egyptian themes with these models. And as always, if you want to go track some of this stuff down, 
We'll have a link, as always, for everything that shows up in these videos, so you can go peruse those models at your own leisure. But I, I kind of dig it. I went with a very, very simple paint scheme, and that was the name of the game this week. As simple of paint schemes as I could come up with. And I do love the fact that these Atlan Forge guys are just so thick and chunky. I mean, they're big. They're big even by, like marine standards but that's what a terminator should be right right I'm, I'm talking to myself but that's okay and just for comparison's sake this is one of the black templar type and the cool thing is with the atlan forge stuff uh everything is totally cross compatible within the range i've been playing around with some of their angelic ravagers rangers reavers a mixture of stuff and they very much play quite nicely with their own parts so if you wanted to build yourself a nice proxy army of relatively similar looking stuff but definitely its own thing do take a look all right speaking of atlan forge went ahead and did a quick job on a couple of our minoans our minotaur dudes they had a nice release of phalanx models recently, like marine-sized. And this guy, despite how much I tried to get him less glossy, it just wasn't going to happen. I didn't know what to do with his hammer, really. So we ended up with a pretty gold hammer. Oh well. I mean, you know, you could totally run these as Custodus if you wanted. Run them as Minotaur dudes. I went wild with the close combat options and started making a very elaborate kill team. So he's like my basic guy. They also have uh, spear options. I believe there's gun options, or you could just cheat and, you know, if you subscribe long enough, you'll end up with gun options from a variety of other chapters that they've come up with. And just swap them in there to change the. Shoulder pads, obviously, but I, I thought this was pretty cool. And then we had to have our Pancration Sergeant with his double robe as he's flexing his power claws. I like big gold robot looking dudes. <laughs> I have no embarrassment in admitting that. I really like the Custodus. The GW put out, but they're just too small. The Alaris the Terminators, especially. I just I loved the design of them. I painted a bunch of them, and they were just so dinky. I mean, I felt that they should have been like this size. And funny enough, outside of the Minotaur dudes that Atlan Forge has done, I can't think of anybody else that's done a Custodus style model that's really grabbed me yet. If you guys have any suggestions, however, by all means, please let me know. I am always in the mood for big, shiny, chonky, golden boys. And maybe some that are gyrating their hips, too. <laughs> we can always throw some of those in. I just realized, speaking of gyrating hips, I don't have any Kingdom Death stuff finished this week. What a shame. But I do have a couple other models all wrapped up. So, like I was saying, my name of this game this week is Relatively Simple Paint Jobs. So we got a couple of Oni Battle Suits from One Page Rules painted up here. I figure this guy I might go back and put a little bit of like white or yellowish orange on there just to have him match up with a lot of the other Space Samurai stuff that I've painted. The Matsudon from Dead Zone. Uh, some of the Asterian drones from Mantic as well. I feel like I've done some more like this, but I just can't think of any else. So we got a punchy guy. We got a sword and shield guy. And I get just very, very basic. Oh, I forgot to even paint his thrusters. That's pretty lame. And then we went ahead and did up one of the sergeant type models. Wanted to have it stand out a little bit more with the gold trim there. A couple spots like that obviously need some fixing. That's easily done. I mean, they're nice kits. But I still have the idea of maybe one day just getting a bunch of these guys, the close combat types, for like Kings of War. 
I think they would work great as automatons. Just the fact that, yeah, they're obviously big high-tech robots with thruster packs. But I think given the proper equipment, you could totally get away with using them as, you know, stand-ins for just about anything. So that's what's going to be on my plate. I got to say, overall, not a bad little haul of stuff. Hopefully, like I said, next week I will be able to get some things finished. We'll see. I have a couple of models that are almost done from Cast and Play, I think, as well as Kingdom Death. Hopefully we'll get those finished, but eventually, since I am going to have a house to myself for the next few weeks, I think it's time to actually, finally, sit down and play something with all these models. Hopefully I will figure out how to save that and film that and upload that at some point. Maybe I'll put it on Patreon. That way you guys don't have to be bored with it. And speaking of Patreon, if you guys like the channel, as always, we have that link down below with everything else. And I must say that your donations and support are always appreciated. And hopefully we will continue to have this channel running for as long as I'm allowed to before the wife puts her foot down. But she's not going to be here, so she don't matter right now. <laughs> Anyways, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. And we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.